Happy Wednesday and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Wednesday is a good day to have a Wellness Wednesday, right? So this week it's me flying solo because I wanted to talk about a topic that I get asked about a lot and that is plantar fasciitis. So if you have ever suffered from plantar, drop a comment in the drop a note in the comments below. I want to see who we have out there who have had this experience because it is painful. It's a painful condition and what it is is an irritation of the plantar fascia, right? Which is the foot fascia. And so if you've had it, you will know it. It is very painful, usually heel pain. And basically, it is involving the back line of the body. There's a full um, fascial sheath. It starts actually at your brow and it envelops through the spine. And it basically creates the architecture in your body all the way down to your toes. Um, it's often caused by things like wearing high heels a lot. Um, wearing flip-flops, so shoes that really aren't supportive for your foot. Uh, it can also be caused by um, things like running on pavement. Um, all kinds of different things can um, cause it, but the real source of the issue is pelvic instability. So the hips are the culprit, not the feet. The feet are the victim. So one of the things I'm going to talk about as my one of my favorite natural solutions is the melt method and in the melt method we have kind of a principle or a saying that we go indirect before direct and what do we mean by that um, if your feet are hurting you chances are that's not the source of the problem or the pain and so we're not going to work on the feet because they're hurting right we don't want to cause further irritation we're going to work on where the problem comes and in this case it is our hips so we need to re-establish pelvic stability and also in the rooting, rooting mechanism rooting mechanisms for pelvic alignment because that's what's throwing off the whole situation here so that means we're going to work on the legs instead of the feet so i'm going to give you two of my favorite natural ways to um, support yourself when you have plantar. And the first is the melt method. And if you've already uh, used these tools or you practice the melt method, I would love to know if you are, or if you are a melter or if you've taken any of my classes or are a one-on-one -on -one client of mine, I'd love to know how your melting is going right now because there's so many applications for it, including rebalancing our central nervous system, which we could all use a little bit of that right now, being in uh, anxious and traumatic times. But um, so if you are already doing the melt method, um, you will, if you work on your feet, you will only ever use the soft ball, large soft ball only. So just keep that in mind um, if you are going to start it using some of the things that I'm sharing today, soft ball only. But um, and the reason why we want to only use the soft ball and the soft melt ball, I've got my melt hand and foot kit here. And I'm going to show you the soft ball. So when you do get to the point where your feet are feeling better and you're using the ball, it's just this soft ball. You do not, do not, I'm going to capitalize that do and not, do not want to use a hard ball, like a golf ball or a tennis ball or something like that. No, no, no. That's just going to give, um, get, that can create further irritation. So we work on our legs also with a soft roller. So here's my melt roller. You can see it's very bendy. So if you have a hard foam roller that you might use for myofascial release, that's not the roller that you want to use, right? You want a soft tool. Another sort of tenant of melt that is very important is that we never cause pain to get out of pain. We never cause pain to get out of pain. So the melt method would be a very, um, powerful tool that you can use to support yourself when you are experiencing plantar fasciitis. There's certainly other things that you can do if you have a great chiropractor that can um, maybe use the Graston technique is a very popular technique for treating melt, 
But I'm focused today, if you're anything like me, you also wanna be able to do something at home to help yourself. So the melt method is something that you can do at home to help yourself when you have the proper tools. And after this video goes up, I'm going to include some information in the comments below of a fantastic self-care package that we have with Melt, where it's a self-care bundle. You can grab the tools and also um, an ebook and Melt maps to walk you through, not just uh, to support your feet and to regain hip stability, but all kinds of other applications. So it's a fantastic bundle and it's a huge savings, the bundle. The roller alone, um, I don't even remember what the current <laughs> going price is it, but I think they generally was sell for like at least a hundred dollars and this goes for um, like 50 ish. So the melt self care bundle is less than that and you get all kinds of other things with it. So um, lots of education. So the melt method would be my first way to um, support plantar fasciitis um, naturally, can do it at home. So if I feel it coming on, I get on my melt roller and I work on the legs. And the self-care bundle gives you exactly the uh, moves that you would do on that. So let's go on to my second um, favorite natural solution to support plantar. And that is, of course, essential oils, one of my favorite tools. So there are two options that I'm gonna share with you. And again, I'll be posting this in the comments below. One is to do a little combination of lemongrass, um, massaging lemongrass on the bottom of the foot and then on the back of the leg and the, to the calf muscle. Again, it doesn't start at the feet, so we're going to apply this up to the calf, calf muscle. And we're going to layer it with some deep blue rub. This is like gold, people. If you have um, you know, aches and pains, this is my must have. So you're going to layer that two to three times a day. So that's one option. Another great heal, uh, recipe would be, once again, lemongrass. And this you'd put in a 10 mil roller bottle. Uh, lemongrass, 12 drops. 12 drops of marjoram, six drops of the deep blue oil. So I showed you the cream, but there's also the oil that you can check out. Six drops of frankincense. When in doubt, grab your frank. And then finally, six drops of peppermint. And you can put all in a roller ball this is kind of the type of roller ball. Mine has some crystals in it, um, but you can use a roller ball like this. And then you're gonna fill it up with fractionated coconut oil, probably about 24 drops of that. So you can fill it up and then you can apply it also in the same area on the bottom of the foot and up through the calf muscle. Now, essential oils are um, great for reducing inflammation and um, you would apply that again, frequently. So there are all kinds of other um, tools that you can use with supplements and such, but I just like that direct application of the essential oils and potentially incorporating the deep blue rub um, right on the foot and on the calf to help reduce that inflammation. And you do that for a few times a day and uh, you know as long as needed. But um, the combination of these two tools my uh, melt practice and my essential oil combo is gonna be a way that you can take the power into your own hands for helping to support your body. Our bodies already know how to heal. It's our innate natural state of being and to be in alignment, to be in homeostasis, to be in a state of, um, of to be pain-free, and so we get in the way of that. We, by maybe wearing shoes that aren't so great, uh, by you know, not stretching before we do a workout, things like that. And using these kind of tools can help us bring the body back into alignment. And when we do that, the body heals itself. That's really how it happens. And so those are my tools today. And then 
finally, um, with those tools, if you are sitting at a desk all day, another thing you may consider is taking off your shoes while you are at your desk and just give your feet time and space to breathe. And that is also going to be another really great thing to just like get those shoes off. Um, even do a little grounding, go outside and just walk in your, you know, walk in the sand or the dirt or the grass to just do a little grounding. And that's just like a little bonus. That's just going to help for some general well-being. So those are my tips today for plantar. And um, just know that it is something that you can get relief from. If you are in uh, the midst of it, it can feel like you're never gonna be able to like walk, run, work out, whatever. And it, it can be really um, debilitating, to be honest. Uh, so this is going to be a wonderful way for you to have tools at your fingertips. So if you can't get out to your chiropractor, or you can't get out for other treatment, you have something you can do. And that's really what we're all about. So thanks for listening. Have an excellent day. And again, if you have any questions uh, or topics that you would like to see on Wellness, drop me a note or put them in the comments and see you next time.